these are your friends they party they celebrate every day every minute every hour every second they're having their way in everything they desire to have and this is you you pray you fast you don't miss a service in church you are involved in every activity in the church yet they're having a hard time getting things done you don't understand what is going on in your life if God opens your eyes to see there's a sin you will repent but it's not even saying anything going through as a result of sin in my life that's just and this particular question is always in the mind of every Christian going through uh, difficulties or difficult period in his or her life and it's always a question and the point is how you see God readily uh, determines your response or your responses to events in your life and one of those events is the fact that many Christians or each and every one of us will go through difficult periods each at different times in our lives sometimes um, you know I, I call those uh, some of these things are uh, waiting period of course uh, but the point is as often as um, we have these challenges or trials the first thing that comes to mind of most of the Christians is actually is maybe there's a particular sin in my life and that is what actually determines how you see God. Some of us see God as um, an entity waiting for us to make mistakes. So at the moment he makes mistakes, he will strike us and our further hurt so that we can uh, fall and further uh, slip into sin and or, or move away from him. Uh, but one thing I want you to know is irrespective of whatever you are going through, whatever the problem is, whether sin or whatever it, it is, you must readily know that there is no trial that will ever leave you or God will not allow any trial in your life without the intention of sanctification. But we need to lay a foundation for what I just said now. Every trial that God allows into your life, God has the intention of making sure that the trial sanctifies, sanctifies you. And what does that mean? It means that there is a call you know, to, your, to himself, whether corruption of sin or whatever it is. What determines this? What God wants to intend intends to do with everything He allows or causes in our life is to draw us closer to Himself. But the point is, we need to see how do you readily see God, and how you see God determines on the knowledge you have about Him. If you look at um, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter, if you look at Ephesians chapter one, I'll quickly read from here. Look at verse um, thirteen. Verse thirteen says it says something. It says in Him. You also, when you have heard the word of truth, the good news of your salvation, and as a result, believed in him, were stamped with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit, the one promised by Christ, as owned and protected by God. So God wants to regularly and every time protect his children. And that is why God has put the seal of the Holy Spirit as his own. Just like you know that no father or no mother, no parent will correct a child for wrongdoing with the intention of throwing that child away. Every time they correct a child is to make that child do the right thing. So when God allows trials to come our way, that is a question of sin. You need to always know that and trust the fact that the Holy Spirit always wants or God wants to draw you closer to himself. And this should actually bring you to a particular level, talking about the level of increasing your trust. So every time there's trial in our life, you should always know that God wants to increase your faith in him. God wants to increase the trust you have for him. And that is why he has allowed that trial uh, to come um, to your life. So whenever you are, you, are, you, are, you are going through a particular difficult period, whether trials or whatever it is, it is always expedient or always very productive to look at Christ and not self. Always look at Christ first in everything you are going through. When you look at self, self will always suggest condemnation. And when there is condemnation, condemnation will bring worry. And the moment there is worry in our life, then it could lead to any other thing. It could even lead to further sin. It could even lead to, you know, uh, uh, beginning to believe that God does not love or God doesn't want you around him. So, when, but when you look at Christ, Christ suggests, you know, God's love. Because Christ is the epitome of God's love, and that's what John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that the gave His only begotten Son. For God's, the purpose of God, letting Christ die for our sins, is because of love. So love is the driving force. So everything God does with us, God is always being influenced by love. And so you need to always know that just like 
um, um, first John chapter 2. If you look at first John chapter 2, um, 1 and 2, look at what it says. Look at what it says. It says, it says that my little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the propitiation of our sins, and not for us only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So there is enough, you know, blood. The death of Christ is enough to save the whole world. First Timothy two four said that we will have all men, you know, saved. So the blood of Jesus Christ is enough to sanctify. The whole is enough to bring the whole world to Himself. But for as many that will receive Him, the blood cannot be exhausted. So how much more you as a child? So the point is that if you focus on God's love concerning your life, even in that particular trial, then it will open your eyes to be able to move closer to God, which is actually the intention of God when He allows a child to come. And before we go on, you need to understand the fact that there is no child of God that will not go to trials. We are built, we are made, you know, through trials. A lot of us become closer to God. A lot of us begin to see God when God allows trials and temptations to come. You see a lot of great inventions, a lot of great things that happen even in the world, even in the church, is because these things were conceived during the point or at the point, sometimes at the lowest point of, of you know of our life. Jesus Christ where it was at the lowest point when the three wise men visited him. He was giving back to a man, somebody that was supposed to come and take away the sins of the world. But he was at the lowest point. That's why you see that in those that difficult period, that it takes those that actually have this understanding to be able to help you or to bring you up out of that your lowest point, out of that trying time, out of that setback. But what you see concerning yourself with your relationship with God determines how long you are going to survive that particular trying dying period. If you look at yourself, then definitely you will say God does not want or readily wants you around and that's why he has allowed uh, that part. God wants to always bring us to himself and that's why he's always trying to show us his love. You will not identify God's love until you have or appreciate God's love until you have gone through some difficult period and when God brings you that, you now begin to say, oh, so this is what God was trying to do. Job had this mentality almost all through the time he was having difficulties in his life. And that, but, but the point is that because he was always looking at self, maybe there's sin. And that has always been the question he asked almost all through Job. But if you look at Job chapter 42, um, Job chapter 42, verse 5 and 6, look at it before I see this. He said, verse 5 said, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes have seen thee. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. So everything, you know, Job knew about God was something he was hearing, you know, from people, from scholars, from teachers of the world, from pastors, from prophets, from apostles and all those things. But Job said what? He saw God himself. And what did he do? He repented. So every time you see God in your life, every other thing will lose value. Every time you see God, every time you encounter the love of God, then sin will lose value value in your in your life sin will no longer be amplified so when you are going through difficult periods when you are open to god what will you have me do just like paul if you look at Acts chapter 6 Acts chapter 9 verse 6 you know after paul encountered christ the next question paul asked christ was that what would you have me do if you look at verse 6 because in his life he had already believed that those that were following you know the christ he's been hearing about are the ones that are actually in error until Christ showed up in his life. The moment Christ showed up in his life, then he started seeing the world, the entire universe, through the eyes of Christ. And so his mission in life changed, his ministry changed. And that's why Paul said that I have spent and I'm ready to be and I'm ready to spend for Christ. And he's always ready to lay down his life for anything, just because what he encountered Christ. So when you encounter Christ, the way you see your environment will change. You will see God through your eyes. You will see God through things. The point the mistake a lot of us make is the fact that we look at our environment and our, our, our mission in life, you know, begin to chase after some things. But when you see God and you begin to see the world, your environment through the eyes of God, then you will look for job through God. Then you will look, your businesses will come up, you know, through God because you are now beginning to see that God is the main source that produces things. So you look, focus on God and when you focus on God, God begins to give you the ideas of things that will actually put money in your pocket or as, or, or as against we running after money and leaving God aside, thinking that God is not because Bible says the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So every time you look at God, God begins to give you things, you know, because He's the one that 
produces everything is the main source it's just like you have a tap in your house you know if you, if you do not connect the tap to the main source where water is supplied then the tap in your house is useless because it will not bring forth water so the same thing with our life when you are connected to god you know like with that tap you know that business or that marriage or what that or, or that relationship begins to become fruitful gives you love gives you peace gives you hope because what it is connected to the main source and that's one thing that you readily need to look at until job got to that particular level Job did not, when he saw God, then he repented and began to submit to God because he appreciated uh, God's love. So when you come in contact with God, you know, God's love, just like I said before, sin will lose its value. You know, when a man comes away, or the best way to understand God is through God's word. So when you do not know God through his word, your responses to everything that happens in your life, the trial that we're talking about right now, the first thing is maybe there's a sin in my life. And so a lot of people are drawn back. Because we our focus is on sin, so we begin to miss the mark, we begin to miss the point of what God is trying to do, you know, in our lives. At every point in time, we are going through some difficulties and we say sin. And the point is that sometimes you recommend three months or one month or two weeks or something passing for God to forgive you. When Christ has finished the work on the cross of Calvary, just with his sacrifice, and there's no other sacrifice that can ever take away our sin. So that's why you must always look at, at Christ and what Christ has done in our life. Finally, let's look at James chapter 1. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, um, 2 to 4. James chapter 1, 2 to 4. Look at what it says. Look at what it says. Removing the question of sin. Look at the NIV version. It says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials and many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking uh, anything so god might just be calling you to himself when you are going through difficulties it might not necessarily be a question of sin but one thing i want to leave with you that if there's nothing you have gotten from this short video the fact that whenever there's trial in your life god is calling you to sanctification sanctification is whatever that is sin or whether is uh, God once requires you to wait for a particular thing. The fact that no trial will leave you without sanctifying you, without drawing you closer to God. And that is always the intention of every trial that God allows or that God causes uh, to come through 